Okay, so since we've made it past the 9900K launch and the 2700 launch, there's not really anything else coming up that I know of. So we can kind of get back to this because I just started getting my feet wet. Haha, <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, I forgot my feet wet, I did it really wrong. But I just got it started with XOC. I haven't touched anything like this since I did my LN2 overclocking video with Kingpin where, let's face it, he set everything up and I just sort of got to pour the LN2, which was fun and all, but yeah. So I, you guys saw the live stream, maybe you didn't. It's had over 150,000 replays on a live stream, which is crazy. I'm gonna show you guys today kind of the process of doing dry ice cooling. Not quite as exotic as LN2. In my opinion, a lot more dangerous because of condensation. In fact, I already killed one of our X299 dark motherboards. So let's just hope that doesn't happen today. Vengeance RGB Pro DDR4 memory from Corsair features optimized peak performance for both the latest Intel and AMD based DDR4 motherboards. To learn how to bring your computer memory to the next level, click the link in the description below. So obviously you're gonna need a motherboard and a processor. That can be anything you want in terms of overclocking. Um, obviously we've chosen the 18 core 7980XE because we are going for you know, obviously Rip GN and Rip Paul and all that. So the bigger, the better. And uh, yeah, you need a good motherboard designed for overclocking. So the X299 Dark is designed specifically for that reason. So that's why we're using that. We're also using G-Skill Trident Z non-RGB memory. This is also 3600 DIMMs because memory plays a huge part in our 3D Mark scores, especially when it comes to physics. So that's why we're using these. But obviously you need a way to keep things cool. Now this is the pot that I was using. This is a, technically an LN2 pot. This is the one Kingpin left behind. If you guys haven't seen that video, go and watch. I'll try and remember to put a link down below. Now, the scores I recently got, he said, uh, hey, not bad that you got those scores on dry ice and the fact that you did it on a pot that's not designed for an 18 core. So he just sent me his newest pot designed for 18 core. And you can tell by looking at it, it's obviously a lot bigger. This one's a two piece too, so you can get different colors and stuff on it. But if we look at the inside, you can see just how much more tower there is or individual chambers for cooling to kind of more control the actual base of the pot to give us a good cooling surface area. So you can see the whole thing is definitely designed for 18 core, which is exactly why he's like, hey, you want this pot. He also sent us his uh, Kingpin cooling heater plate. Now I already killed a motherboard, like I said, and the reason why I killed it was condensation. I let it get too warm, condensation formed, got onto into the PCB, and I believe it actually got into the socket and it killed the motherboard, but not the CPU. It's amazing how robust the CPU is. This CPU just keeps on ticking. So we're gonna see how far we can push it today. But this actually goes on the back side of the motherboard. It uses one of these giant thermal pads that he sent with this. This is actually a thermal pad. Look how thick that is. That goes on there like that, or it can technically go like that. And then our heater plate goes on top of it <clears throat> like so. So this is a heating element that will heat up the thermal pad, which will heat up the backside of the socket, which will keep all these components warm and keep water from forming back here. That's what killed my last motherboard was water. Other things you're gonna need obviously is insulation. Like I mentioned, we use a lot of blue shop towels. We use Vaseline. As I said, uh, this is actually, actually for Steve, you know, cause I keep beating his scores. So he needs the Vaseline, but I digress. That's besides the point. This is actually for insulating the motherboard. So it's a messy job when you do XOC. You need a way to monitor temperatures because unfortunately the onboard motherboard monitoring is not designed for sub-zero. It's not. In fact, if you go below negative four on this motherboard, the cores will show negative four, the motherboard will show FF instead of a temperature readout as soon as you cross zero Celsius. So that makes this completely necessary because on the bottom of the pot right here, you can see we've got these different holes that are drilled in here. These are different places that we can actually monitor temperatures. So you've got uh, one right here at the very base of the pot and you can monitor temperatures all around it. So I'm, sh I'm sure he's got this in there so that he could have probes all over it, making sure you have nice even temperature, but you just put a dab of thermal compound in there, stick the probe in there, bend it up, tape it down, and then you get your reading at the actual base of the pot, which is what we we're gonna be doing here today. Um, let's see, what else? That appears to be pretty much it. So today, if all goes well, we will take my delated 7980XE. We are going to reapply my KPX thermal compound, something that Vince designed specifically for sub-zero cooling. We are going to apply it under the IHS. This is, this is a delated 7980XE 
It is not re-glued. That way I can reapply it as needed. We also are going to be reapplying, obviously, our thermal paste to our pot. And that's that. The motherboard also comes with this standoff, which is kind of nice. So you can keep it off the ground. Voila, just like that. It's like a little test bench. You can get airflow underneath it. We will be also doing graphics card on our extreme water cooling, which is with just a giant ice tank that's being pumped through the radiator, keeping our, our temperatures as cold as possible. Our graphics cards will actually run under load about 12C, 13C, not bad at all. But if we don't do that, we can't get the temperatures anywhere near where we want them. So let's go ahead and set this all up, see how, uh, how low we can get it and whether or not we can actually get my CPU back up to 5.6, which is where my current CPU score is on 3D Mark. And I wanna see how far we can get up on single card today. Okay, so this is our setup here. We've only got one GPU because I really kind of only focus on single GPU today. Um, so here it is. We are going to go ahead and we, we heated up the pot. And the reason why we did that is I observed Vince, oh, that's pretty warm. I observed, observed Vince do that when he uh, was here. He did it with a torch because when you apply the thermal paste, you because you are gonna go sub-zero, you don't want it to sort of harden in a non-spread format. And you know, as you heat up thermal paste, it tends to thin out and get a little bit wider and it sort of dissipates and spreads out more uh, between the materials that it's touching. So if we went straight to Sub-Zero, that would never spread. So we heated that up to about 60 C, we're at 58.1 right here, you can see. So that sort of represents very similar to what a, a processor at stock speeds would probably be doing. So we should get some pretty good spread of that thermal paste. So now we're gonna kind of let this cool down just a little bit here and then we're gonna go ahead and put in our acetone. Now we use acetone, 100% acetone, because it doesn't freeze at the temperatures that dry ice will get to. If we were using LN2, well the LN2 itself would be our conduit in terms of dropping the temperatures, but we use acetone because we need something for the dry ice to melt into to make cold, which the acetone has a much lower freezing point than even our dry ice, which is like negative or minus 78 C or something like that, minus 80 C kind of conflicting information on the internet. Bottom line is, it's pretty damn far below zero, but not as cold as LN2, which can get minus 150 and beyond. And then there's liquid helium, which can go all the way to like minus 250, so something ridiculous. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and let this kind of cool down here for a little bit, and then we are going to uh, see what we can get on single GPU. I'm aiming for 5.5 at least, hoping for 5.6. Here's our ice bucket right here for our GPU. We will be doing GPU LN2 slash dry ice but uh, I'm, gonna, I'm getting a custom card for that. So let's go ahead and I just wondered if that would actually lower the temps at all. It's at 56.9. So what you're looking for here on the initial test as you're, as you're cooling it down is you are looking for these temperatures and the pot temperatures to be similar. Because remember, we're the software is measuring inside the actual die, whereas the pot is measuring the actual metal touching the die. So if those two are very similar, then we're in a good spot because if they were very different, which I've seen before because I used bad thermal compound that wasn't meant for sub-zero, then that would tell us that we were not getting a good thermal transfer between the pot and the chip, which means instability and potential damage. Oh, All right. No, no, that was coming out of here. It's the display stopped working and then this yeah. started smoking. I mean, look, look at the wires. See, it started from inside there. So now we have no idea what our loop temp is. One ish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna keep trying to get this lower. So it's gonna take a lot of energy, a lot of ice to get the acetone temperature down where we want this to be, which is gonna be close to negative 50-ish or minus 50, minus 60. 
Because think of it like when you first put ice in a bucket, the ice will start to melt, like that is right there, the ice will start melting as it is equalizing. And then once it equalizes, it'll stay at that temp and take a lot less energy, or in this case, dry ice, to keep it there. So we're using a bunch right now to bring the temp down, and then it will be a lot easier to maintain it. Ah, it's cold, I put my hand on the ice. Okay, so in all fairness, this pot is not exactly meant for dry ice, so that two-piece nature of it is probably allowing some of it to get through the sides. I, sh I meant to tape it. I should have taped it and I didn't. And so what we're dealing with now is just acetone just everywhere. Fortunately, acetone itself is not really conductive. It's now like dripping under the board. So now XOC overclocking is really not that much different than regular overclocking. Now we're basically gonna just bump it up incrementally. So I'm gonna go straight to 5.2 with all the same settings we just did. But my main job during this is actually to regulate temperature here and make sure that all the temperature stays well within, you know, safe zones where we want it. All right, 11,787 on the CPU, getting there. And that was at 5.4, 5.5. So we're gonna go and try 5.6, a number that I had a hard time getting stable before that I really think I attribute to uh, the fact that I couldn't keep the temperatures quite as cold and the pot was probably just getting a little bit overworked. 5.6 crash. This appears, 5.6 is like, a bit of a wall for me. I'm having a heck of a time hitting it. Like reversed. Oh, I don't think we're gonna be hitting, I don't think we're gonna be getting uh, 5.6 on this. I think it needs to be colder to get 5.6, 5.7. Vince was telling me, Kingpin, he was telling me that, you know, this might be a 5.8, 5.9 chip, but it's gonna need like minus 150 to get there. You'd be surprised what temperatures can actually do in terms of stability. Oh, okay, it finished. <laughs> we're over here playing. Oh. 18603, so let's go ahead and compare results online. 8603. Oh yeah, I would love it at 18603. I'm seeing ones as I've smoked, smoked and inhaled so much acetone and dry ice. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven, I just moved up another one. But in a nutshell, this is what XOC is like. You spend a lot of time tweaking and tuning and figuring out what works and what doesn't, and very little time actually running the test, at least for me, learning like this. We also got bored and started putting dry ice in here. So such is the life of XOC, I guess. Now what we have to do is we actually have to warm this up to about minus 20 C before we can shut it off. So about minus 25, minus 20, then we shut it down and take it apart before the condensation can form and destroy our motherboard. So, yeah, with that guys, we're gonna go ahead and shut her down. Thanks for watching. I just, you guys seem so interested in the live stream that I did. I thought I have to do a video about this. And since Vince had sent me all new stuff, I figured I might as well at least try it out. And as you guys saw, I gained back like two spots, two or three spots on single uh, card alone. And I think I'm gonna try right now to go ahead and just do like Fire Strike Extreme and Fire Strike Ultra and uh, maybe even Time Spy. And uh, I don't know, we'll see. But I'm pretty much out of acetone and stuff, so I think we're, we're done. And rather than prolonging how long it'll take me to shut down this system, I'm just gonna go ahead and just run like uh, Prime 95 or something to let it warm up to, warm up to minus 20 Celsius. Yeah, crazy, right? It's at minus 61 right now. It's gonna take a little while. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. And this guy's still over here sizzling. Do all this at your own risk, seriously. I've already killed a motherboard and this board is ugly now. And this board was drenched in acetone earlier because it leaked out of the pot. And you almost frostbit your I almost frostbit my thumb. We almost caught fire. It almost caught fire. So yeah. That's a wrap. <clears throat> Intro. Uh, this thing broke on me. Oh, oh it's smoking. Oh, <laughs> there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That started smoking on me. That's really warm. Well, it said so. 1C right before it exploded. <laughs> cold potato, cold potato, cold potato. <laughs>